Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly, ever so warmly, in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. Well, I'm heading back home. I'm uh, just getting ready to pull out of a uh, roadside rest here along uh, Interstate 70, heading, uh, heading eastbound. I'm uh, all about 30, 35 miles west of town. It's about a quarter to ten. Been a long day. Wednesdays can uh, be like that sometimes. Uh, just coming in from uh, all the way down in Oxford. Uh, been through several stops on the way there and one on the way back. Of course, it's been kind of a uh, iffy week. Those of you who uh, live east of me here know certainly better than I do what I mean by that. The uh, storms that came through, the hurricane, and uh, we didn't get a lot of that, but the uh, peripheral storms, uh, you know, the fronts that joined up with it had just passed here through Ohio and given us two to three days of rain when they uh, joined up with that hurricane and came right back at us with a whole lot of wind. And so we've had a lot of rain and wind, but not much, nothing to compare with, uh, with the East Coast, certainly, and my prayers go out to those people and those friends of mine who are there know, know that I care about them and have... Uh, have been in prayer for them. You know, the storms, the uh, hurricane just a few years ago that leveled uh, a large part of New Orleans. You know, I'm almost 63 years old and uh, I've never seen anything like either one of those in my lifetime. I think things are speeding up. There does seem to be a quickening in the air, my friends. Uh, as if had said once before on one of his podcasts with Brother Thomas that the uh, time of blood is in the air. Uh, the time of death is here. Certainly, certainly if you look at the book of Matthew, you would you would judge by the words of our Lord that, that the time of sorrows is, is at the very least upon us. Uh, he talks about the, the storms, the wars and rumors of wars, and people have asked me before, how do you define a rumor of war? Well, a rumor of war is uh, the newspaper constantly speculating about Israel attacking Iran. The rumor of war is the newspapers and the press constantly speculating about the reformation of the Arab Caliphate and what that will mean for Israel. And there are rumors of war on the Korean Peninsula. Rumors of war in this little island between Japan and China that the Chinese are now flexing their muscle over. In our 24-hour society, we have more rumors of war than we have war. That's because we have so much time that they must give to speculation, which is largely what the news is. What isn't slanted is certainly mostly all speculation. It's meant to stir us up to make us nervous and they talk about the next step the earthquakes the geological things and they mention the earthquakes have been stepping around the ring of fire in the Pacific going from the one several years ago that killed so many people in Southeast Asia sliding up along the ring of fire through the Japanese earthquake and now here just last week they had one uh, in northern British Columbia. And so all the speculation and the stirring up is, does this portend something off the Cascade Coast, uh, there along the fronts, along the west coast of uh, Washington and Oregon? And they seek these people to stir up your fear. And people that seek to do that are not of the Lord, my friends, because the Lord tends to and calms and shepherds his flock. His hand of protection is always upon us, always upon us as we enter, as we enter the end times of his plan, if that would be what it is. But we should always remember, we walk with the risen Lord. We stand with the risen Lord. We are under his protection. Nothing comes to us that comes not through him. But when you walk with the Lord, my friends, we must always remember position, position is everything. 
our risen Lord has given an absolute promise that in him shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory and he has also told us in the book of Isaiah that even to him shall men come and who gives us the power and the will to come but the Father himself according to our Lord's own words no man can come to me except by the Father which has sent him to draw sent me to draw him but will the Father draw all the chosen vessels to our Lord we know that he will our Lord told us that he will not lose one of those our, his Father has given him He also adds that it is written in the prophets that they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father will come to me. We come to him, my friends, to be with him, to learn of him, to speak with him. We come repeatedly over and over again because we live every day in a world of filth. And it separates us in the little ways, in the little things. We feel contaminated and we need to return to Him in order to wash ourselves inside and out of the things that perhaps we did and shouldn't have done or didn't do and should have done. The things we say and shouldn't have or perhaps shouldn't have and did say. <laughs> and a million other things that can come between us and our living God and begin to cleave some separation where no separation should ever be. And you say, how do I come and come and come again over and over? I thought I was, I came once and it was all done. And I say that is wrong, my friends. We come repeatedly because we live in this world and because of the very things I stated. And how do we come? How do we come as simple? Every act of faith whereby you look at our Lord and think on our Lord as a coming. Every beam and ray of hope that you realize and feel for His salvation and His grace and His blessings upon you and the righteousness that he has imputed to you through that faith. All of these things, my friends, are comings. Every sigh, groan, or tear, every contrite heart that is heavy under the conviction of God for the things of the day. The things of the day, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes words are hard to get out, especially when I have my teeth out and it's very late at night. Every breathing desire, my friend, every pleading desire of the heart, of the broken heart, these are all comings to our Lord. Even to Him shall men come. Draw me, says the bride, we will run after thee. In the Song of Solomon, the Lord appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee in. When we are drawn, my friends, then we can come. Then we must come. It is good to come. Good to come on a daily basis even more often than that sometimes. Even those who have received from Him in overflowing measure will tell you themselves that they must ever and always be coming to Him. We get nothing. We get nothing from our Lord except that we come to Him, my friends, seeking Him, knowing Him, our daily life, 
the life we live, everything we walk, every one of us, I don't care what you do from the highest to the lowest. Our daily life as a believer, as a Lamb of God, is one of faith and hope. It is a life of coming and seeking and searching and asking. Our continual prayer as we walk, as we converse, is a coming for the language, for the language of our faith has always been and still is. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. Thus, my friends, we must ever be coming that we may ever be receiving. For in these times to come, those those who will walk through will be those who have come to the Lord on repeated basis, who stay close, walk close, live close. They will hear. They will hear from our Father. For you see, my friends, position, as I said earlier, is all important by coming on a regular basis to him in whatever form it is you position yourself to receive all that our Heavenly Father has for you you must position yourself near to see him and to hear him especially to hear his gentle whisper Oh, my friends, our God is a God of the intimate. He speaks to us in a gentle, close-up whisper. And we must train ourselves by this constant conversation to learn to hear it, recognize it, appreciate it. Even in a crowd, even with the distractions of life, we must learn to walk close enough that we might talk with him, stride with him, converse with him, commune with him at all times. And the faster and the quicker times come upon us, the more important this constant presence will be. For the one thing about any given moment is you never know when it's going to come. Therefore, stay close to the risen Lord. Spend time, my friends, in His Word. For it is here that we learn to recognize His voice in so many ways. And spend time in prayer. That we might learn to converse with Him. In a gentle, easy way. That we may become intimate that we may confess in an intimate sort of way to one that we have loved so deeply and that we have confidence who loves us. There is no other way to do that, my friends, than by that continual coming and closeness. My friends, you must be in his presence close up and personal to know him to see him, to hear him and to receive from him let me close this message with a, a story all of you know and a character we've all heard of since we were children, some of us there was a man, a rich man who had gotten much of his money through ill-gotten gain in the land of Palestine in the time of our Lord and this man was under heavy conviction and guilt for the things he had done and what he had taken unjustly from others. Yet the call of God was on him and he so wanted to dump the guilt but he didn't know how.
And when he heard a young, a young rabbi who people claimed and proclaimed to be the son of Almighty God, who had risen, risen from the dead, who had, let me rephrase that, who had risen, arisen a man from the dead who had died. There we go. <laughs> it's getting late, my friends. Who had healed the sick and the lame and who had forgiven sin. When he heard this, the call in his heart was overwhelming and he had to go. Yet the flesh within him and the weight of his guilt held him up and he procrastinated and put off until finally, when he overcame all and he did go, the crowd was so large he could not get close. Alas, he did not know what to do, so he, he climbed up a tree in hopes that he might get a glimpse of one who held so much promise for his heart and who his very soul had compelled him to come that day and see. And so as he climbed up in this tree, the sycamore tree, so that he could get a better look at our Lord. Wouldn't you know it as God's timing always is? Did our Lord not pass directly underneath his tree and look up and confront Zacchaeus right on that spot? And we all know what happened from there. You see, my friend, in the life of Zacchaeus, in the life of Peter, in the life of all of us, of every lamb who has ever walked. Position. Position is absolutely everything. Come to him, my friend. Stay with him. Amen. Good night, my friends. I don't know. Well, it looks like I'm back into a little bit more rain here. It's kind of been on and off since the uh, storm went through. I guess that's supposed to clear up tomorrow. It'll be good to have a sunshiny day. We haven't had one for a while, so that'll be kind of nice. I got some work to do out in the garden this weekend. I've got some uh, some plants I've got to take up that they had a uh, bug infestation with the heat this summer and just kind of overwhelmed uh, some of my evergreens. And, uh, I'm going to dig them up. I've got a couple of grandsons coming down to give me a hand. Uh, and we'll do some of the uh, final touch-ups this week to get the uh, get the yard and the ponds ready for uh, for the winter coming ahead. Well, my friends, I'm about, uh, I just passed the mile marker there. I'm about uh, 15 miles away from my exit. About, puts me about probably 20 miles.